Hey everybody, what's going on? It's the Night Dive crew here again. It's Friday, coming at you live. So, say hi everybody who's in the chat. Hi. Hi everybody. We've got... <laughs> what's up everybody? Hi, Dr. Nick. <laughs> hi everybody! <laughs> what a time. Uh, you, you can tell it's Friday around here, can't you? So, uh... Howdy, yeah, it's uh, time to get on with another design kind of meeting presentation for you all. So, if you don't know what's going to be happening, we're going to be playing through the game. We're going to be resuming off from where we left off last time, which was, I think we were just about to get in the elevator to go to the research labs. So, uh, we'll be picking off, picking up, sorry, from where we left off. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you guys are having a great Friday. Looking forward to the weekend. So uh, yeah, let's crack straight on with things. I think it was difficulty one that we were doing. So yeah, let's load up the save from last time. I've got a few saves in here that I've been using for uh, other purposes, but I just have to find the right save now. So I think it was save five. Yeah, there we go. Okay, hope you guys can see everything. Is sound okay? Everything looks to be fine. I think sound is good. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, where we left off, we did the whole of the medical level, which was pretty cool for two hours. Um, I should ask to uh, all the guys currently in the, in, the, in the chat, do we want to go back through this level and check out anything before we move on? Chris, I don't. I don't think so. Right. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I think we could. I think we covered it pretty well. Mhm. Mm cool. So, yeah, when we arrive in the research labs, uh, there is a huge. You get. You guys know about the uh, the ambush that happens at the beginning. Do we want to kind of do anything with that? Change it up a bit? I think it would make sense, because this part can be a bit overwhelming when you come in, even on the original version. Well, let's check it out. Yeah. Okay. Level two. And uh, there's about five or six of them, and they're all attacking me. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, look at them all. What a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we should ha probably have about twice as many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're all queuing up to get in here. It's funny. <laughs> oh, man. I I'd love it if we could have them, like, crawling over each other. <laughs> they're saying there's no game sound that they can hear, but do you, do you just have it very low? Oh, sorry. Yes, I turned it down. Um for reasons. <laughs> I will turn it up just a tiny bit. And that's on the lowest combat difficulty. Uh, this is one, yeah. Okay, you should is be able there, to now. Is there a better way to... Uh, like, is there anything you can use to take out more than one of those guys at once at this point? Uh, you can use a grenade. Um, that's probably what they were intending. Yeah. Sorry, Although they're quite close to you. Yeah. There's that, and yesterday I was playing through, and the grenades, they seem like they have a very short range. Like, I kept, I killed myself with a grenade. I think that's what <laughs> I'm trying to say. Ow. Yeah, I think that's a pretty interesting encounter. I mean, especially since it's like a low-level enemy, it shouldn't be that hard to kill him. We could... Um... If we have the resources to do it, we could animate them like dragging the elevator door open when you get to number two. I always had visions of them coming around this corner, like they were all kind of waiting in this corridor. That would be pretty cool, actually. You, you can I think it would be more interesting if you saw them all approaching. It would give you more of a chance to decide what you're going to do. Yeah, you sort of get to about. You'll see it in a minute. I, you get to about this point. And just like these mutants, like you hear, like maybe a a growl or something come from down the corner. And they all just and start pouring just... around the corner. Yes. Yeah, that would be so. That that would be really cool. 
Tuckla saying enemies block the grenade AOE. It doesn't affect enemies behind. Is that true? That is true. The grenades yeah. can do that. It's oh. crazy. Will that still be the Ooh. same thing? That we can we'll... fix that. Okay. I'll I think it's intended. That. We should make it so that they will intentionally <laughs> leap onto grenades and take the grenades for their oh friends. My <laughs> <laughs> What is what is feature creep? <laughs> I do like the uh, the momentum that they have when you kill them. It's like their bodies are disintegrating as they're like falling towards you. Yeah, that's gonna be fun since we're gonna have um, like some really nice ragdoll systems. So we'll have them falling over themselves when they die. Hmm. If they're if they're like moving towards you when you kill them, they'll go into like a tumbling walk. That should be great. Dan, that room that you were just in with the, uh, like, that tile that was just basically open out into space. Yes. That'll be a nice, um, some of those will be really good opportunities for us to embellish environmentally. Mm, I was thinking like, about okay. that, that room with the, uh, the space window would be a good chance to, uh, like, expand it into a little sort of basically have that as a little area like it's designed to have a nice window on one side and things make it actually look like a, a proper little office oh god these things oh how, has anyone thought about how we want to address the zero gravity mutants yeah i've been thinking about these and i was thinking they could be really since they they seem to be almost like a uh they're in a, like an amorphous mass of organisms right so if we can find a way of having them like kind of change shape and stick to walls and stuff we can kind of they're not exactly anti-gravity but they can move through the levels as if they are because they can stretch away from surfaces and things that could look really cool oh, wow. almost like a living ooze like a living flubber yeah yeah that'd be pretty interesting <laughs> make them look like gogo in space is, yeah. that a, is that a misspelling or is Goga an actual thing? Goga is an thing. actual thing. Okay. It's yogurt it's... on the go. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> because normal yeah. yogurt is very stationary. I like the way yeah. the uh, <laughs> I like the way the mutants' heads kind of topple off their bodies. They yeah. split in half. It's so nasty. Yeah. Sometimes they do, but one of them, I swear, his head toppled off a second ago. Or if they only got one death, and one, am I just imagining things? Their eyes are the worst things. Hmm. Oh, their eyes. I want to have it so that if you electrocute them, their eyes pop out like a monocle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ping! God. Gross. Like sunglass lenses? Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Exactly like that. Negotiations continue to go well with the United Earth Miners Conglomerate over rights to Saturn's moons. Trapton is uniquely positioned to make a deal since Citadel Station is already in stable orbit and there's scientific equipment necessary for preliminary surveys. Profit predictions, assuming a 30% stake in UEM's local mining activities, the standard rate for such deals, are very promising. Our lawyers are researching the legality of imposing a 4% shipping tax since Traptum technically has first rights to space shipping lanes in the Saturn sector. A little bit of law there. Interesting. Ooh. I noticed that there's a, uh, when you look at certain areas, a line comes up and it's like, click this to search it or whatever. Mm. Oh yeah, that's the online help. I don't know why that's, is that still on? Did I, it should have, no, that's weird. I thought it turned off or maybe I turned it back on so I could, okay. Yeah, if you, the, so the online help is not online in the sense that we think it is. It's online as in it's just turned on. But it kind of turns itself off after you step outside the um, a certain point in medical. I'm not quite sure where, but you can turn okay. it back on. So and basically, it just points at things that you can use. Yep. To almost like so, it's their equivalent of a tutorial. Yeah. Um, you can <laughs> double click to open a hidden door. Yep. <laughs> not not so hidden anymore. Nice. 
Not when you have the online help. Different times. Yeah, it disappears after you've after you interact with anything once, it'll disappear. Uh, okay. This is a really weird area. I like it. I, I really like these walls. Steve was talking about these walls last time. Hmm. We like sure do up. love walls, but we also love uh. doors. <laughs> I'm, hey, not sure I love, I'm not sure I love doors anymore. <laughs> <laughs> doors are falling on my list. What about Thank floors? <laughs> floors, doors... I've already made loads what of floors. More? Ceiling, lives matter. Oh god, mutant. Go away. Oh, Somebody was saying that we needed like a three minute trailer of just nothing but doors opening. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. We Done. We could do that. I mean, if anything's <laughs> gonna make me make the doors really satisfying, knowing that they're that there's gonna be a trailer that shows all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the door I mean, portfolio. You yeah. should make one. You should make. I will one use that as my portfolio in future, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So this area is a bit weird. I have no idea what on earth the purpose of this is. It's just a switch that raises a. 200 by 200 part of the floor for no real reason. I've noticed that. Mm. I, I've, I've been working on research labs and it's it's That's odd. Interesting. Well, we should definitely keep that in if there's absolutely no reason for it. Because yeah. I think that's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> In maybe fact, there was... we should add more things that have that are completely pointless. <laughs> well, maybe they had a plan for it. They just didn't have time mm. to make it happen. Um, Dan, I got a, a kind of a basic question for you, but when you're playing the game, uh, you know, on a higher difficulty and it's just you, um, how often do you use stuff like the sight, berserk, reflex patches? Um, me personally? Uh, yeah. Not much. Uh, the, so, the, the berserk things are good at the beginning of the game because the pipe is incredibly weak but once you get a hold of the laser rapier the game can become a joke uh, because that thing is just so it's just so damn powerful you don't need a berserk patch to do a ton of damage so personally I don't use them very much um, that and I've just been playing the game so darn long that I kind of know where everything is and how to deal with things but um they would be more interesting for i guess newer players somebody I'm just trying in the, to think uh, yeah uh happy biscuits yeah they say they never really use patches i'm just trying to think and i know this is totally blasphemous for a lot of people but i'm again i'm we're kind of at that stage where we can start like trimming down on things that may be unnecessary by today's standards. Yeah. Um, or rebalancing yeah, things if we, uh, well, I mean, the, we do want to keep them. Well, the patches are akin to, you know, buff, like buff potions in like, you know, a classic medieval RPG. Um, and I don't, I don't really use buff potions, but some people do. And you only really use them when you absolutely have to. And I, I see like them as what is that giant grey block? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, in the corner of the room, there was like a grey. Yeah, it. So this is a futuristic Ooh. spaceship oh. in like the you know the late twenty twenty second century or whatever, and it's a shelf. Uh, they they need how can we okay. prop up three pieces of wood, guys? We need a huge concrete slab slanted at a forty five degree <laughs> angle. To I mean, it makes these perfect three, sense. To prop these three pl pieces of veneer up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say about the patches. Um, I think those kind of buffs, they're quite often they're put into games as a way of um, allowing you to kind of choose your difficulty oh. as you play. Yeah. Right. Well, there's all kinds of interesting things. Um, you can use them to get past areas that normally you couldn't. Um, you can use them to beat bosses, even though you normally don't have the, the power level to do so. Um, but I don't really use them when I play, like, you know, medieval RPGs. And so I probably wouldn't use them in this game. 
But that doesn't mean we have to remove them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Space Ikea. I like this little corner with the uh, chairs. Yeah. Little with hangout. The staff room, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I, think I mean, this might be a staff room kind of thing. Sorry, Steve. Um, so the Matt, the uh, the proxies for all the patches are in. Do they currently uh, change? I mean, obviously they're not going to change anything like damage since you know we haven't really prototyped the weapons yet. But um, I guess we just keep everything in, and and when we start doing some play testing, we uh, uh, we can do balancing as necessary. Yeah. Um, they don't currently do anything, but um, it wouldn't be hard to add that. So, okay. Paper note here: uh, Engineers report John David Wong, seventeenth of September. Note to all science level engineers: I am still unable to pinpoint the source of the power surges in Beta Quadrant, though they are likely related to some of the other recent glitches in Shodan's operation. At Mr. Endicott's request, I have installed circuit breakers in Alpha Quadrant in case of power outages in Beta which will become apparent in a moment. Oh. Should we change all the paper notes into like little tablet notes? Yeah, yeah paper notes <laughs> seems a bit not of, you know, the future. <laughs> but you never know, they do have trees in the groves. Maybe they <laughs> grind it into pulp and they manufacture their own paper. I think we should change them into faxes. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Can we print it out on old Game Boy printers? Calligraphy. Oh, the Game Boy printer. <laughs> Game Boy printers, huh? I know this level so well now, the research labs. I've been running through it to do the minimap stuff, and um, yeah, all of these areas are, I know them by heart now, so that's good. Got a little you know, story for you, if you're interested in hearing it. Sure. Go for it. Uh, when we were at GDC, uh, we went to this indie meetup at the Sycamore in downtown SF and there was a guy there in the middle of like 200 people stuffed into this back lot of this awesome little restaurant and he had a Game Boy but he also had a Game Boy camera and a Game Boy printer and he took pictures of people and printed it in <laughs> glorious like dot matrix 8-bit printing and it was the crappiest photo I've ever seen but it had so much nostalgia That's amazing. We should have more Game Boy printers around. All right. I don't know. Everyone voted. <laughs> we should add that option to the uh, the the Game Pig. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, That's an upgrade for it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, have you able to print out these crappy little dot matrix pictures of uh, anything in the game you want to take a picture of? That would be so funny. Save it as a we PDF a step. on your computer and you can print it out yourself. Go yeah. a step further and do it like Firewatch so you can order the prints that you, you uh, took pictures of. <laughs> can we have it so that you can send faxes to people from in the game and it, they'll receive it on their actual fax machines? If they have one. <laughs> Everybody has fax machines. What are you talking about? It's the future. <laughs> okay. There was a fax machine at Sony, and I actually did have to send a fax one day. Really? And and uh, it like how, didn't how work do they anymore. Work? You scan it. You yeah, it's like basically a a printer with a phone attached to it, mm. and then you just put your piece of paper in, and it like pulls it in, and it scans it, and then it just makes a whole bunch of awkward noises, and apparently it gets printed out on the other end. It wherever do. it gets received. Amazing. A lot of car and motorcycle dealerships still use faxes, and they're like, oh, could you fax us this information? <laughs> uh, I, think I don't those, even own a printer. <laughs> if we do make those anti-gravity mutants almost like a, a blob that creeps along the uh, level geometry, then they're going to be really creepy in the dark. Yeah. No, that would be cool. I was also thinking, when uh, that little flying robot it would be really nice if we had like uh, a built built in kind of docking ports for them in the ceiling or the wall or something so that they can become active when the player gets there and come out of that. Sure. 
It'd be kind of interesting. So well, I was thinking it's useful to have places that we can use as respawn points for enemies. So uh, rather than just having them appear in the level when you're not around. Yeah. Respawn points that make logical sense. Yeah. yeah. Want to add that to our notes? Yes. Have we started a notes yet? Because I don't have it. Oh uh, yeah, I put it in the Discord channel, uh, the streaming channel. Cool. Oh, there it is. I've made a few notes, but I feel like it'd be better um, if you think of something to add it yourself so I don't mess it up. Oh, I trust you, Carly. You trust me? I do. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put Chris respawns in every level. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Have we figured out which one of us is going to be a cyborg yet? Oh, what? Thomas is going to be... Every cyborg is going to be modeled after Steve. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. We all voted on it. <laughs> I think that we should uh, change Diego to Steve. Oh yeah. <laughs> Am I really that evil? <laughs> it's your Nobody evil twin. We'll, we'll, we'll make Diego you with a goatee. Yeah, it has to be a goatee so you get that mirror universe vibe going. <laughs> and a and monocle. Then when, and then we'll finally have a mirror at the end of the game. You see the hacker and the hacker was Steve all along. Oh no. <laughs> Redemption arc with time travel. <laughs> so this is a weird little place. Um, this room doesn't serve a purpose, really. It's empty, but there's just a hidden door here that you can use to kind of reach through into the next room without the so bot scene. It's is kind of like a... If you don't want to get shot by the hoppers in the other area with the energy conduits, it's mm. kind of a shortcut into that, but... Yeah, I don't like this spot either, and I've always thought it was kind of dumb. Hmm. I mean, you can tell it's like been remodeled because this whole area has been torn apart. But it's, I think, one of those things we could probably improve on, or at least put a reason for the hidden door to be there. Like perhaps have some kind of weapon or item in here that's worth going for besides the, the logs. Yeah. It is good. I would. I will say though, it's good to have a mix of like areas that don't have that much to find and areas that do, so that you don't, so that it feels special when you find the secret areas that do have the good things in. Yes. So that it's not all, uh, all the same. Nothing quite like going on level seven and finding your first scorpion assault rifle <laughs> hidden <Yes>. away. <laughs> and then you, you know what I used to love doing? I would go to the bridge against the elite cyborgs, take all the drugs I could find, including the, the reflex drug, and then just <laughs> unload a hundred like rounds of a mag into every one of You'd those guys. face it, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just be all drugged up and just like murder every single one of them. <laughs> you know, it's sad, though, that the, the reflex patch doesn't have any effect in cyberspace. So like when you're done gunning down all the cyborgs and you're still kind of loopy from like distorting time and space, you go in to fight Shodan, and it's all back to normal again. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> so that, that circuit break off. lever, that restores the power, the, the light, sorry, in, in beta that we learned from that report, uh, from that report that we found. So, uh, got that little problem solved. I really like the design of this area. Like, once we get to doing final art on areas like this, they're, they're going to look like a maze of wires and pipes and machinery and like open panels and stuff. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, right. Matt, uh, quick question. You know uh, how Daniel was saying he had read that uh, paper document that referenced the circuit board there that turned on the lights in beta? Mm -hmm. um, since we're going to have that really great kind of interactive uh, mini map, when you read stuff like that, are we on lower difficulty levels? Are we going to have it auto populate the, the map to show you where that reference was? Sure, we can do that. I, I already have plans to add several more interactables to the mini map to display because the original game, if you notice, doesn't have it like, like any of the power stations or, or our surgery beds. Yeah, so can... I mean, I, 
I think that'd be really cool. Um, I know some people are going to want it on higher difficulty where, you know, they aren't given that, um, like, breadcrumb trail. Right. Um, but on lower difficulty level, I think that would be that would be nice. Yeah, we can do that. All right, let me write that down. The respawn design, like respawn areas, will work again for these little guys since we can have them crawling out from behind things and stuff. <laughs> hoppers. Everybody loves hoppers. <laughs> hoppers' this, lives matter. This is this room right here is. Oh well, you're probably beyond it at this point, but that room is really weird back there. With the uh, big ramp and all those diagonals. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone back to it. This it's really weird. Um, Normalize this area in the block out because it just didn't make any sense to leave it it's all slanting. Oh stuff. god, yeah. On the top and the bottom, it's all really strange. Yeah, I did have that, but uh, I think Matt. Well, wasn't it Matt that you said to, you said um... to um, change it? Yeah, it just yeah. it was weird. Hmm. We'll try to figure out a way of like uh, kind of alluding to the original design, but keep it making more sense. There's a lot of interesting rooms in this level. In the um, <clears throat> the retro stuff that I was working on, this was actually one of the more fun parts to work on, just because of all the metal surfaces and the, mm. the emissive uh, energy conduits that I kind of brought back to life. Take that hopper. You know, you could use the mag pulse. It's way better against those. I could, I could, but I don't have much ammo for it, so I'm saving it. You don't get, you don't get ammo for this gun for a while. Yeah, don't, don't save all your most powerful weapons. We want to see them. I always save everything. And, so do I. That's and then, why and I'm then I never somebody use else. it. Because I never know when when I'm supposed to use, so so I just never end up using it. Are you guys Same. video video game hoarders like I am? Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Everything was done with me, but for no reason. I used to be, but I, I've turned into one of those people that just runs through and misses everything. <laughs> you ran out. Because, because I get worried that I'm not going to finish the game otherwise. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends on the you know how much I like the game, but if I like the game, I am OCD and I have to go find everything. And save it and not use it. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Um, I think at the end of like Fallout Three, I had like a hundred thousand caps. <laughs> yeah. No, it really it started back in the SNES days with the elixirs and stuff. But yeah, it's it's carried on. So yeah, I'm gonna head around to Beta Quadrant now. Because that's in where terms... we need to go. Oh, sorry to cut you off there. No, it's fine. I was going to say, though, in terms of uh, the discussion about hoarding weapons and stuff, I saw a post on uh, Reddit not too long ago where this guy's like, he's playing a single-player shooter game. He spends the entire playthrough hoarding all of the primary awesome ammo types and never uses them. He uses only the worst weapons and ammo because he might need the good stuff later. Completes the final mission, suddenly realizes he got through the whole game without ever having fun with the coolest weapons in it realizes he's doing the same thing with his actual life. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, Doom 2016 took all your weapons away at a certain point. Ah, spoilers. Shit. <laughs> nah. It's not really spoilers, because basically what I'm saying is don't hoard your weapons in Doom 2016. Um, same goes for, I think, the thing that killed me the most about the, uh, the Metro series is that the good bullets... You can use them in your guns, uh, and they do a lot more damage, but they're also currency. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but then you also have the ch the option to use, like, really low-quality handmade ammo. It just does a whole lot less damage. And, like, I went the whole game without using any of the good ammo oh. or buying anything useful. So it was like... Yeah, at the end, I was like, man, that was a total waste. <laughs> it took me ages to realize in um, the newer Resident Evil games that they give you the ammo you need. 
Yeah. So <laughs> I was like trying to use the weakest weapons to save the powerful ammo, and then I found out on like a second playthrough that if you use the most powerful ammo, the enemies drop the ammo. <laughs> oh. Is that Resident <laughs> Evil Seven? It might have been. I think it was. Yeah. 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 The first person one. Yeah, that was. I had so much fun with that game because I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna just use all the best stuff whenever mm. I get it, and I had a, it was. It made it more fun. I was like, wow, maybe game designers are. Um, they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> they don't just flounder well, around mean, in the dark this right. whole time. <laughs> yeah, but that one case where they're evil and and you actually needed the ammo and you used it. <laughs> that's what you got to guard for. Also, I remember that Stalker Clear Sky has this really stupid point in it where it just takes your weapons away and all your money, and then because that's always fun, right? Oh, because oh, you yeah. get robbed, I though. I think. You get robbed, but it's such a shitty excuse to take your weapons away and all your stuff. All the stuff that you accumulated is just, nope, it's gone now. But can't you get it back if you kill the, the bandits? Uh, you get uh, some of it back. Not all of it. You'd, you, Isn't you that kind of how it though. works? Like with Metroid, though? Like every time you, you go through the game, you get like super awesome and powerful, and then the next game starts, and it's like you never did anything. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's how most games work. Mm. So this area, I imagine it was some kind of theater, you know, cinema. Um, that was a weak screen. Yeah, they yeah, they need a bigger screen. I yeah. would actually go as far as to call this a presentation area for like lab work. I think it's yeah, a, yeah I think actually it's a brainwashing studio. <laughs> actually, that's a good point. It could be a presentation room. Um, they really need a table for that clock. They do. It's broken as well. It's yeah, it's broken. Yeah, people are calling it a conference room. Yeah, it's broken. Yeah, yeah, it could be a conference room. Yeah. I mean, it's in the research labs, right? So. It's weird that I guess a clock's they could. On the floor. Yeah, <laughs> they could use it for. Uh... I mean, there's a little seat on one side, right? Which I guess would be the person who's in charge of the PowerPoint display or whatever they're watching. Imagine like. Just one lone mutant sitting in there, waiting. People, people still use PowerPoint? Is that a thing? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. If they're so. going to use faxes, maybe they'll use PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there actually, like, any, th any significance to that room? Anything significant you have to do, or is it just... That conference room? visual set piece, yeah. Uh, just a visual set piece, I think. That's quite cool. I I, I always like it when uh, games will put things in that are not there for any particular reason. Yeah, like this room. This room doesn't really have a purpose, but when you open that door, the whole room becomes flooded with radiation. Ah. Just to, just to screw with you. So if I'm stood here, I just open that door. I am now poisoned, and I'm supposed to be very very sad. Ah, uh, awesome. That's part of what makes... I mean, it's not awesome. I don't want you to be poisoned, Daniel. No. But... Huh. And there isn't even anything in there. No, there's nothing in there. It's, 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 what it's a the troll. strangest thing. <laughs> it's the strangest thing. But that's the thing. Things like that, they make the world feel that little bit more real. Because not everywhere is there for a reason in real life. Yep. And if you're, if you're making a super arcade game, then it's good to have everything be there for a good reason you know everything is there for a reason right. the gameplay but if you're making an exploratory game which is supposed to be immersive then it's good to have these areas where the player kind of goes in there and goes oh that's interesting but i guess that's there's nothing in here for me to find right i, I would make a similar argument like um the when you put too many of those things in, they just start to mechanically go through the levels and when they see a little mm. cubby they know there's a secret there and when there's a room, there's going to be items, and they just go in mechanically and collect the items. Uh, you got to mix it up, otherwise they just players Definitely. become too mechanical. Oh, hey, it's that door I just made the other day. <laughs> oh, and you can't go. You can't open it. Need the psi card. Well, like the door in medical where you needed an STD. Oh yes. <laughs> That was a very poor choice of words. <laughs> I, I I am proud of the door. Oh, okay, that's my brother. Never mind. Oh. 
Walk over here, and this room has got uh, biocontamination in it. Oh, look at the mutants behind the door. Yep. Mm. Those things are so creepy. I hope that uh, when we create all these different um, enemy types, that someone like Daniel can't go through the whole game and just use one weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should make it so that if you use the spark gun on certain enemies, they get stronger. Oh. <laughs> that would teach them. Oh, like Just the board. Yeah, exactly. Like if you cool. if you try and use uh like the spark gun on the uh on certain electric enemies, it will just charge them up. Ooh. <laughs> like isn't that there's like a, a movie thing with that. Um I'm not going to be able to think of it, but that sounds like something in a movie. It does. I'm sure yeah. I'm sure it's been in Star Trek at some point. For some reason, I'm not sure why, this corpse is indestructible. Because oh. he has the psyche cards on him. You know what we and should do? Two, which is very strange. Sorry, we Chris. should make it so that in, the, in our new version, when you try to blow the crap out of bodies on the floor, you just blow them into more and more pieces and more and more mess, so <laughs> that Daniel cannot clean the, the levels. Mm. Yep. Eh, I, I like the idea of using the spark beam and having it disintegrate them. But yeah, if you use other weapons, it should just, it should just blow into pieces. Doom yeah. 3 oh, style. They just, kind of, uh... they just kind of melt away. Doom 3 style. Yeah. Yeah, I like that effect. We've got the beautiful shelves in this room again. Yeah. Two shelves this time. This Oh, no, actually, sorry, three. Um, the weird... Which... The weird part about this area is um, you have a you have a choice, but you don't really have a choice. So you can either kill this mutant, uh, sorry, this cyborg drone, or you can hack into cyberspace to get the permissions you need. But you will always be attacked by the mutant that has the key cards anyway. So I so don't that would be really a good place why. to adjust it and make it more of a choice. Yeah, you either. In this area, we might have to stick the mutant somewhere else, like maybe further down. I think so... it would be a good idea if we can differentiate which mutant is likely to have the key card. And just in general, if we're going to give a key card to a particular enemy, that enemy should look like it's higher in rank. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've got the concepts and stuff for higher rank versions of cyborgs and things, so I think that would be, right. well, be a we, good idea. Yeah. In the Unity demo, we had a higher ranked mutant mm. in, in the demo at the end. So, yeah. We yeah, don't even need true. to any longer. We can just, like, put them in a different colored outfit or with, like, a security symbol on it or something that isn't on the others. Just something to differentiate that this is somebody important so that a player who might be rushing through and not checking every single inventory of every enemy they kill would think, okay, I'm going to check the inventory of this one because they look special. I like how there's Game of Life going on in the background. Yeah. On the walls. We should try to uh, add m even more little things like that into cyberspace. Do you want to um, jot that down real quick, Chris? What? The... Uh... the, the just, um, I guess, uh, creating variants based on whether or not they they hold key uh, mission critical items. Thank you. No worries. So there's another little choice here. You can either hack uh, the access panel for the wiring puzzle to get the code. This uh, monitor's malfunctioning. Say it's laser override code that you need. Um, Darcy says you need the you need the code from the science library. So you have a choice here.
Oh, we'll do it. The, we'll down. <laughs> pew 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 We could have it so that the um, as someone mentioned that shouldn't we be, have a more powerful weapon than the than the spark beam? Maybe we should because the spark beam has different settings you can set it on. Maybe we it could have. Uh, Similar to the phaser from Star Trek, we can have the highest one be disintegrate. We come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. We come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, man. Yeah, like, because uh, there is the stun gun, right? So that's one instance where we can kind of uh, group things together so that you could mm. set the spark beam to stun or s set it to kill. Kind of thing. Because what. Is there any um, particular reason that you, you would use the stun gun? Uh, not really. Have you ever uh, used it? No. <laughs> no. It's the the. That's funny. The environment is too violent. Same thing with the uh, the riot gun. It just fires rubber slugs. It's not that useful. Maybe we can make it more useful if it's something that we don't decide to cut. Somebody's pointed out pacifist runs, which is something people will want to do. So it's worth yeah. having weapons that you can use if you are trying to pacifist run. Mm -hmm. Unless we want to make it incredibly difficult. <laughs> so I think this is the first piece of software that you can't pick up because it's blocked by the ice defenses. Um, the fun thing is, if you try and shoot it, it will shoot back at you. Ow. Oh, that's interesting. Oh yeah, only, sorry, it only works with the drill. You don't get the drill by this point. You get the drill at the end of this level of cyberspace, so then you have to go back in to um, get the software. Jungle Strike guy says the riot gun is useful because you can move landmines around with the ammo. Yeah. Oh yeah, it doesn't set them off. Yeah. There aren't many places where you can do that. I guess the secret is to add more landmines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, cyberspace! This is a really long section of cyberspace, actually. And this is where I usually get killed. We basically decided we're going with the almost Forsaken style for cyberspace, right? Yeah, I think I mean, so. It basically is. But just with really trippy uh, music visualizers all over the walls. Oh, yeah. Sweet. And EDM. Yeah. EDM. Got group four access. I think this is the end. Yep. Oh, maybe you don't have a choice. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Somebody mentioned that cyberspace needs an effect when you shoot down enemy projectiles, and that made me realize that if we are use if we have a universal master shader across all of the geometry in cyberspace, we can do things like have ripples that actually ripple across all of the. Uh, all the geometry in cyberspace, that could be really cool. Oh, that's really cool. Enemies explode and you see like the ripples away from the explosion through all the geometry. <laughs> uh, where's my... data? Yeah, like, like the Matrix, like Alpha Space has said. Oh yeah, so I hacked cyberspace and in my data I, f I found the laser save the laser safety override code, which is 199. But I'm just going to do this white puzzle anyway. Huh. So 
Safety code 199. So there, there's a there's the point in the game where you actually have a choice on what you want to do. It's probably the best one so far. Um, but we can, you know, change things around with the other puzzles. So I got group four access, which means I need to go somewhere important. Where is Gamma? Sorry, Delta. Yeah, there we go. Because there is a very important key card down here. Uh, Dan, real quick, I'm sorry to derail here, but um, there's a Microsoft update for Windows 7 that you have to install in order to play System Shock, uh, the source port, right? Since it's using Kex. Yeah, there's an update to the D3D47 compiler DLL. Um, there should be a link to that in the support channel already if you scroll up a little bit. If not, you can ask Sam for it and he'll have the he'll have the link. Or you can check okay. the Forsaken support forums on Steam. There's a sticky post that has that link in it as well. Okay, I think I got it. So yeah, this corpse very important because it's got the engineering key card on it. Which is extremely important because you can end up going halfway through the game um and then all of a sudden realize that you need the engineering key card. Oops. Be having fun in the elevator. Yep. It has its ups and downs. <laughs> nice. I'm waiting <laughs> to say that. Oh boy. I like the uh, the glimpse into hell that happens when you go through a teleport. <laughs> Everybody else saw that, right? No, I think I missed it. It wasn't looking. Doom shock confirmed. <laughs> so, yeah, this room, there's not a lot too important about it right now. Um, apart from there are some energy drain mines. But the, m the most important thing in this area is the laser override button, the laser control. So, as it sends currently, if I fire that button now, I end the game because I destroy Earth myself. Um, Do it. That's something we want to keep, isn't it? For the, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. I'm going to save it and blow up. I guess do it's it. yeah, a bit of <laughs> Detroit, I think. I think Just it might be blowing it. up Detroit. Yeah, so. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do Don't let your dreams be dreams. Mm, <laughs> I've done it. I feel like we should make this like a, a playable ending where like... Oh, where the, take... the, the Cortex Reaver comes down and takes you to a celebration. <laughs> yeah, like she actually just kind of hangs out with you and gets you drunk and she's all happy. <laughs> you know what I think should happen is the Cortex Reaver comes down empty and makes you the driver. <laughs> <laughs> and then off you go to the celebration. It could be fun. I don't understand why she didn't just send a cyborg down to press that button. Can they not Plot open hole. that door? Flat hole. Uh, this door does need science, science key card access. One of the cyborgs does have it, have two key cards, but you take them. Um, plus the laser is still technically charging, so she might be waiting to fire it at its uh. full capacity. You want, you kind of fire it while it's charging, which still does a lot of damage, but probably not the damage she wants to do. So she's probably like waiting. Mm. And plus she's also waiting for the virus to to perfect itself as well, because she says, 
she's going to use the laser first and then while everyone's going out we've just been hit by a laser she's going to set the virus on people so that's, that room with the, the button that fires the laser we should yeah. probably have some kind of monitoring equipment that shows where the laser's pointing <laughs> so you can see it just when you this, fire yeah just this distant star in the distance yeah oh, that's earth so we can get through to Psy, to the uh, Alpha area. You know, I've just noticed something. Hmm? All these red doors you're opening are not in my list of doors. Oh, they're not? Nope. Good. I gave you a zip file full of doors, was it not in there? I don't believe so. More oh. doors are... Well, they're, they're not in the list of uh, doors that have been recorded and animated. But they are very simple doors, so I guess they won't take me very long. I can get that done in a day. <laughs> doors are just coming out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. Never-ending doors. The doors, man, they're coming out of the walls. Wait. <laughs> 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 Never gonna be able to use the door again. So, got isotope X twenty two. What is the what does nitro grenade do again? Uh it's just a more powerful grenade, I think. Um <laughs> let me check. I do make things other than doors, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't believe it. It's, a, gr <laughs> it, it's a grenade that you can set the time on to explode. Yes, you can do that. Oh, that's cool. Wow. So I didn't whose know head that. is that? Uh, dead head. Oh, no oh. proper burial for him. Yeah, I mean, that was a bit harsh. I still love that this is a phone. I honestly thought it was a calculator before I clicked on it. Oh. Huh. That's a weird item. Can you, can you do anything with it? Shoot it. <laughs> Oh my That's god. That's what you do with everything. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was uh, funny that you could find those helmets. Like, I, the first time I played, I was like, oh, how can I put this on? And nope. You can't do anything with it. I like the robot maintenance room sign. Those maintenance robots are really fascinating looking. Yeah. They kind of look like the Insecticons from Transformers. Mm. Like that one, Shrap... Uh, what's his name? Sh Shrapnel? I don't even I don't know remember. what it attacks with. Is it a tail? It's got like a little... No, it opens. The top opens and a little thing little comes prongs out. with electricity. Yeah. Is it floating, or is it supposed to be walking? It just doesn't have a walking and attacking animation. I think that's, yeah. I think that's correct. Is it just really sucking? <laughs> it just can't hit you. So... That. Is there a max as to how many batteries you can pick up? Um, there's a maximum item count of, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can hold 13 items in your general area. Um, the space is taken up for access cards, which you, when you click on it, you can read what access you have, so that can be useful. A paper in the room that just says 623. No I context. I don't what know 
Yeah, I oh, what could it possibly be? <laughs> I don't know why that's there. It seems a bit silly. This give you this answer so easily for this puzzle. And this this doesn't really do much anyway. It just stops the hoppers from regenerating on the reactor level. Um, uh, Rob is asking if the Yang Yang door is an elevator door. He doesn't remember. No, it's, think so. it's an executive door. Mm. Ah. Special door. Uh, one sec, guys. I need to turn a light on. Do, 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 do. Yeah, in my head all day. <laughs> <laughs> Doing elevator music for me. How cool. How nice of you. Okay. So all that does is stop the hoppers from regenerating in the reactor level. I'm thinking the circuit puzzles, because I've got the circuit puzzle art is... Uh, basically done but the the panel that it's hidden behind i don't think it's going to suit the design of every room that has a circuit puzzle in so we're going to have to come up with a couple more designs for um the actual panels the circuit puzzles are hidden inside that's something i'll have to talk to rob about <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> and that's why you use nitro packs. And that's why you lose use landmines. Take all the goodies. We've got a uh, an argument about the Vanu in the chat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Vanu has best butts. You worked on that, didn't you, Steve? Yes, I did. <laughs> Everybody knows that the uh, Terran are the best because they have the best goggles. That's right. Group access card three found in the thermos of all places. I've actually got some... Mm, let me see. Off topic, of course, but I've got some some plants I had to art that people probably haven't seen. Well, probably not much, but well, I've got the we've got the second code to our we've got another number on the screen that we're not supposed to know what it's for yet, but we all know by this point. So from here, we go to either level 2, 
sorry, level 3 or level R? We need to go to level R first. Um, because that's where we need to put the isotope. Does anybody have anything they want to go back and look at on level 2 before we actually carry on with this level? I think we're good. Mm, I, can't think of anything. I went quiet for but a moment to purchase a bag that went up for sale. So <laughs> 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 the hidden doors are interesting because they open in different ways depending on which tile they are. There is a lot of variety in that. Yeah, there's, well, this is something that me and Matt have been talking about, the hidden doors. And uh, I think we're just going to be going with like a, uh, a generic setup for the hidden doors right now because we can't really design them properly until we get to the final tile set designs. There's going to be a lot of unique hidden doors also. Yeah, so many unique designs. That was the hardest wire puzzle in the game. More doors. I didn't even realize that System Shock was just uh, doors are basically the primary thing of the whole game. It's actually <laughs> a game about doors, as far yeah. as I can and tell. Opening doors, closing doors, finding yeah, doors. Yeah, basically. System Shock and Resident Evil. Games about doors. Yeah, well, somebody oh, I really... love cutscenes about opening doors. My goodness. Oh, maybe we should change every door in wow. System Shock into uh, an unskippable cutscene. Into an unskippable cutscene. Yep. <laughs> That's the only way I'll play it. <laughs> that was a good job. I looked behind me just then because that auto, auto bomb opened the door and came after me, and I had no idea they could open doors. <laughs> know, yeah, auto bombs can open doors. Apparently, they're learning. They're thinking. They're adapting. <laughs> <laughs> so I only discovered this recently, but this is a small CPU. You destroy this, and it and you minus twenty percent off the overall security of the level. For about fifteen fifteen years, I had no idea this existed, and I always wondered why I could never get the security in this level down past twenty percent. Um, this stupid small um, CPU here is the reason isn't why. That, isn't that sparking wire? Yeah, why made? isn't I was yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Why isn't it damaging? Uh, don't know. They do in System Shock Two, Sparks do, but not in this game. Well, they do in our game now because I made it. <laughs> so blam. Security now seventy percent. Oh hey Steve, I found. Hey. Uh... Hold on, I'm just going to link this to you. I made this back when Planetside was doing the thing where players could make and send models in for them to turn into helmets and stuff. Oh, but yeah. they, they never actually got it to the point that people from outside of America could do it, so... Oh. <laughs> I just shelved it. Terrible. Whoops, helps if I don't throw the isotope on the floor. Ding dong dong. So yeah, this isotope has been put inside the uh, power converter, and the shields are now on. Exterior Campbell uh, camera D A H twenty two L detects activation of radiation shield. That sounds good. Yep, it is good. That's what we want. But now if we try and if we go back and try and fire the laser it won't fire. These displays 
when we uh, do those in the actual game, we'll probably have like a rendered view. Of, well, not rendered even like a in-game view of the station on a, a camera screen or on some kind of display where you can actually see the shield come online. Yeah, that'd be cool. Instead of taking the player out of the game, you can actually see it happen in real time. Yeah, if you just look at the screen, the display, and you'll see it. If we... So I imagine... So this level, I have noted there is a lack of windows around this level. I don't mm. know if that's um, for specific reasons, but if we do decide to put windows in our uh in our version um we're gonna have to have the shield fire up around so when you look at those windows you can just see the shield like engulfing part of the level that'd look really cool. cool um so kane is asking how easy it is to set up cameras like that in ue4 it's actually very easy they have a system for um um well you can do it with virtually no code at all They've I mean, Matt can probably answer in more detail because he's looked into it. But well, so you just mean a cap, a, a, a camera, screen camera, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's really easy. Um, the the only difficulty is that it can get expensive if you have too many of them. But I think they have a um, they've got an example map you can download, which shows you how to use them and switch between them and stuff using Blueprint. Right. Yeah, I mean, I set them up. Um, very easily, yeah. They, you just set it up and set up a render target and screen capture 2D, and they're done. Makes it really easy to use inside a material as well because it's just counted like a texture. So you can just uh, plug yeah. it into your standard uh, texture node. So the reason why we got the engineering card back there is so we could get access to the React area. Uh, we do have access, but this door is locked for obvious reasons. Oh yeah, we are. We are. It, someone's mentioned the iris doors, and that is something we're we're trying to figure out how we're going to have moving through them because they they look like you should have to crawl. But we'll figure something out. Yeah. We don't want to take. We don't want to take control away from the character entirely, whatever they're doing. So it would be more like guided control than actual than an actual canned animation. Yeah, because there are a lot of iris doors. Also, there's something here that doesn't make much sense. Um, so, yeah, uh, sorry, yeah. So here you get, um, you have to solve a puzzle to get into this room. And on just the got a circuit puzzle right in the middle of a monitor. <laughs> oh yeah, there is. And um, Wow, that's really cool actually. For your reward for solving the puzzle is to get access to some things, but one of those things being a biological systems monitor version 1. However, if I go out of this room, go right, follow the corridor right to the very end, there's a version 2 of the same thing just lying on the floor. Uh, <laughs> making that one instantly useless. It literally said at the top of the screen, that's obsolete. Yeah. That's really interesting. So they've right. put that in so there. Just like so yeah. 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 Yeah, I well, like if, if, you missed the, if you missed the version 1 the first time, you have another chance to pick it up, because I already got one. But just that one there was version 2, and I don't have that one yet. Although, also, this is the only area in the game where you can do this. Um, it's a decontamination area. You double-click this button, and it removes 100 um, points of radiation or biocontamination. Uh, off your like character. Oh, so we need particle effects in there. <laughs> it's the only place where you can do this. It obviously, it makes sense being the reactor level. You might need to get to one of these really quickly, but we could have a you nice. Know. We could add a, a new door in front of it as well, like a glass door that you've got to go through. Because I don't think we've got enough doors. Like shower <laughs> heads in there too. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know what was really unnerving 
in uh, System Shock 2 is when you started getting radiation poisoning, and would be like, yes. Oh, God, and God, would noise. flash, and it just, like, <laughs> freak, it just freaks I me out. I didn't know what it was at first. <laughs> Um, but, you know, we also could implement, you know, something from the stalker world where all you need to do is just chug a bottle of vodka to get rid of radiation. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. And good for you. Well, yeah, vodka cures everything. Who says that getting radiation poisoning has to be a bad thing? Yeah. Just an excuse to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs an excuse? <laughs> the words just right out of my mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> Lighting rooms that have predominantly uh, like bright red walls is going to be interesting. Yeah. So because... Kane's mentioning <laughs> making the player vomit when they have radiation poisoning, so Dan will have more stuff to clean up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I, d I, I don't know if the... We won't, we won't take their control away or anything, we'll just make them vomit in the direction they're pointing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the f I don't know if the uh, spark beam has a delicate setting for fabrics. <laughs> so this is a monitoring room. Um, just look through, and you can see areas of the station. Switches next to them make the cameras move. There isn't a ca there isn't a camera actually physically in that location in the game. But, uh, yeah, just something that you can do in, in the world. That's cool. So those security cameras, are those ones you can actually go up to and break as well? No, I, I just said they... They don't. There's right, not. A, there's not a camera actually at this location in the game. It's just. So we're a, gonna need. We're gonna need really? a differentiation between the uh, between Showdown's cameras and the security cameras. Yeah, I'll Showdown's go back. Cam Sorry. That's actually a good a good thing actually because Showdown's cameras are almost like eyes. Hmm. Showdown, whereas these cameras are used are monitored by actual. It looks like they're supposed to be monitored by actual people rather than by the. Yeah. Station AI. So it makes sense that they look different. Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually a question that I had had when I was working through these levels, is um, if the cameras you can look through are right. Well, it all depends. The game likes to swap its rules about a little bit, so sometimes the cameras are there, sometimes they're not. It's not consistent at all. Is there okay. a reason? Is there, like, do you ever need to have have access to those where you can destroy it and potentially ruin something? Um, no, I don't think there's a point in the game where that happens. So we I could just add cameras there every every time. We could do, but I think it thematically works better if those the more organic looking cameras are Showdown's own kind of camera system. Security yeah. Well, they, they can be two different types of cameras, but I just I just mean they they should always. Be oh yeah, we should we should have actual cameras there definitely. Yeah, you could destroy them. Um, you know, the players should cotton on pretty quickly that those cameras are not Showdown's cameras. If they look different, and then they'll make it be up to the player whether or not they destroy them. Camera view of the reactor. Oh, there's little flying drones. Those guys bug me because they don't look like they should be able to hover. Yeah. Their yeah. design looks like they should have to keep moving. So there's a radi radi radiation treatment area that we just saw from the camera view, but there's just no camera here. It It's not consistent, but... Eh. Mm. Sorry, Callie, were you going to say something? 
I was just thinking about like modern drones and how we can redesign based off that and it makes more sense for hovering anyhow. That's true. And maybe not necessarily hovering but bobbing. It's the future that they've invented hovering technology. More cyberspace. Yay. Yay. Got the drill. Cyber Cortex Reavers. They look really cool. I'm really looking forward to working on enemies, especially the robotic ones. I can imagine, especially after so many doors. <laughs> <laughs> I may, I might try. I'm gonna try and make the robotic enemies, and they're just gonna be like doors with arms and legs. Going, oh, <laughs> That's no. scary. <laughs> That's almost like um, you uh, try to shoot mimic. them and they open and it flies right through. We should yeah. have a mimic oh, you can't, doors. You, you can't start any enemies until you finish all your doors. <laughs> you don't want to spoil God, your it. meal. I'm just going to jump straight to the Cortex Reaver because it's my favorite. You have to do that on stream. People need it. Okay, I, I will do the Cortex Reaver on stream when we get to that point. I think people want to see Hoppers on stream and Cortex Reaver on stream. Okay, I'm looking forward to doing the hopper as well, actually. Because <laughs> there was contention about whether or not the hopper was even going in, and I'm like, I'm going to model it, and then it kind of has to go in. <laughs> <laughs> so we just did some very important things there in uh, cyberspace. Open the armory, which you can, you can either get this, the security access to open it, or you can just hack it. Uh, with the uh, uh, ah. so yeah this is what I mean um, things will shoot at you if you don't have the access if you don't have a drill strong enough I had to leave cyberspace then but you'll, you'll see it in a sec So, this is probably one of the one of the most iconic kind of little areas of the game. Uh, it's the the death machine room. Um, are you guys familiar with it? Can't say I am. Uh, so, a whole load of cameras around for very weird reasons, and there are a whole load of bodies on the floor. Yeah. Um, there are Jesus some. Th heads. <laughs> there are some things to help you. This access panel. Now, this access panel doesn't do much. All it does is turn on a very faint flickering light, but it might help you overcome the area. I love these wire puzzles that are literally just trial and error. Yeah. So as you can see now, there's a little flickering light. You might think, ah. you, you might think, what on earth was the point of that? But when you step in the room, you'll actually realize why. Uh, 
and there's some cool things that I will show off for that area. It's been, if there are any Red Dwarf fans here, it's been pointed out that the Hopper looks a bit like a scutter droid from Red Dwarf. <laughs> and actually, um, one of the options, if we can't find a way to get the hopping to work, one of the options is we could replace the base of it with a uh, with some little treads, like some caterpillar <laughs> tracks. Scutters are too cute to shoot. <laughs> not if they're f not if they're eight foot tall, yeah, firing that's lasers. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> now, something new about this area that I didn't know until very recently. You could struggle and jump up here. It's fairly easy to jump up there, but how high can you jump? The gravity is fifty percent, so you can jump. Ah. You can jump really, really high, and the I game. Mean, you can mantle as well, can't you? So you can. A lot of people kind of don't know this, but you can actually mantle. In the game, well, that one area in research labs, you had to mantle to get out of it. Yeah. Um, I noticed that. Like, I was, I was asking that earlier if there's any areas you absolutely have to mantle. Right? Mm. Yeah, definitely yes. But one thing I didn't realize until very recently: there's a switch hidden up here. Flip the switch; it puts a stair there, a false stair, a false bridge. Uh -huh. I had no idea that this existed. Oh, someone pointed that out for you, didn't they? Yeah. That's really funny. That's so random. So I like the... all the flashing lights in here. I can't wait to replace them with loads of spinning red warning lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, after 15 years, this game is still surprising me. That's a sign of a good game. Mm. Got the yeah, flash love... shit. Sorry. I love... Love finding secrets in old games that you've never seen before. Mm. Got the flechette, which is, which is essentially... It, it, is, it is a good gun, actually. Uh, it just uses a heck of a lot of ammo. This door will be locked. Oh, I've noticed like the. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Sorry. We <laughs> Sorry. Can a, we can get a hint of the original gun designs from the uh, the barrel at the bottom of the screen as well. Yes. As well as the uh, the pickup yeah. icon. Hmm. I think there's paper, like there's pen and pencil drawings in the uh, icebreaker manual too. Oh, okay. Can someone just make a note about the the just put down in the notes react to blast door and I'll remember it but I forgot that this door is unlocked in cyberspace. Oh, somebody else getting that? I'll I'll write that down. <laughs> you do it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the maze just cause. Hidden door takes us all the way around to here, but we need to. Do we don't need to go this way. <laughs> More door art needed. No. <laughs> no more. No more doors. Just one more door. No. Which I, I swear we're gonna keep finding doors right up until. I know, I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. Thirty-five gig, day one patch. <laughs> <laughs> Missing doors. Just the patch notes. Oh, whoops! We we missed a door. I love this it's maze. This maze is great. Sometimes the text just jiggle around like there's an earthquake. Yeah, that's old. Uh, I think it's Z clipping. Is it? Uh, oh, I, can't I know remember it's, the term. it's more likely to be um, a floating point. Um, hmm. What's the word? Compression. Yeah. But 
where they uh, they don't store the corners of the texture in as much detail as they otherwise could because they need it to run fast. Is yeah, it... like Sir Kane said, it's, it's basically bad sampling. But it's like sampling of where it's... It doesn't know where the actual uh, numbers are for the yeah. corners of the textures. So this door definitely is locked. It's locked from the outside. You can't get here and in here unless you do the maze. Um, but that is a way around if you don't go into cyberspace and don't unlock the blast door. A very rare Earthshaker explosive there. How do they work when there's no Earth on the station? <laughs> That's a good question. That online help thing certainly makes secrets a bit pointless. Yes, it does. <laughs> So here is the death machine room. So there are a couple of cool things here. Um, you go in. I'll, I'll go just through some scenarios. So you kind of wander in and you go, oh, this looks very strange. I'll just keep walking forward and then you get oh, shot. Yeah, this room. So, that will happen. Oh, you're gonna die. No! <laughs> Welcome to my death machine, interloper. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, something else you can do. Um, it doesn't really have any positive effect. Um, but it's just something that the designers kind of thought of. Um, which is really cool. So there are four cameras in this room. That one. That one. That one. When you destroy the last one, this happens. Oh. Man, how are you ever supposed to beat this back when the <laughs> controls were? <laughs> Can I just say, I think Welcome to My Death Machine should be the name of Shodan's first album. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, God, what was the band name we invented? Matt, do you remember the band name that we had? I forget what it was. The band name, I'm sorry? There was a joke we had a while ago, the band name. Ah, uh, I can't remember. Never mind. What kind of band was it? Um, punk. What kind of punk? Uh, I'd, I, I, I'd, I'd say crust punk, but then that just makes me hungry. Ooh, crust? <laughs> that can be interpreted in a lot of ways. What was that tiny little hidden area in the corner behind you? Oh, that's where um, another camera is hidden. When you just think, like down in the floor. Yeah, when you think you have all the cameras. No, you don't. I just, I just, I just found it really cool that if you, 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 you're trying to outthink the computer, but she still wins anyway. It's kind of like, yeah. well, if I destroy all the cameras, she won't see me, and then it kind of all goes very wrong. So, how do you get through this room? Like this. <laughs> that that yeah. sure would be quicker if you use the mag pulse. Yeah, uh, right. Fine, I use the mag pulse. <laughs> fine. There, mag pulse. Die. Thank you. We feel better now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
another multi view, but we've already got one, so it doesn't matter. But the assassin bots were basically the same in System Shock Two, weren't they? Um, They're very similar. They had they had shuriken mm, guns again. They did, yeah. And they like to jump around a lot, so that was new. Yeah, they're they're very similar. So yeah, as you might have found the camera for this area, you'll recognise that this is that triangular hallway with the exec bot mm. at the end. Uh, another very important area. Um, this is going to be a fun hallway to. Uh, oh yeah. To mm. tar up. Yes. I, I will not go any f further <laughs> into this area because there is nothing but pain, death, and misery that way. So I'm going to go this way. But it looks so cool. It does yeah. look cool, but it's also. Is there anything pain. in there? Is there uh, any reason to go in there? Yeah, that's the reactor. Oh, okay. It's just as soon as you step over that threshold, you get bombarded with radiation and flyer bots and security two bots, and you just it, life right, is life it? is very sad. Stressful. Yeah, there, it's max radiation. Yep. Pretty much. That sounds like fun. Sounds like a riot. You should go. Hi. Yeah, I'll go there for my Hi. next holiday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we found what looks to be a monitor of some kind, but we don't, unless you obviously you need the code to get through this, which is 199. And then you get access to the safety override of the laser. So right ah. now, right now the laser won't fire because the safety override is on because the shields are up. The laser won't fire. You turn it off and you can fire the laser. Safety interlock disabled. So that's good. That's what we want. Oh my god, I'd completely forgotten about that. What? Your brother's comment in chat? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'd wipe that memory. I'll read it aloud. Uh, it says I remember watching Chris play at SS2 not long after release. Cyborg assassin trapped him in the revive chamber and killed him again and again. Ah, <laughs> memories. Wow. The trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have any ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> um, instead of having to go back through all that, we could take that shortcut. The, this shortcut is a very useful shortcut. The only problem is, for some reason, this uh, corridor is very heavily radiated. Um, so we we'd just like to point out that Night Diver against all forms of cyborg bullying. <laughs> mm, yeah. Wow. Well. Cyborgs are our friends. But sometimes they can be jerks. <laughs> I mean, this guy, I walk in here, he's, he's going to shoot me. Why are you shooting me? He's been a jerk. So he well, it's, it's not, it's not no, bullying it's... if they shoot you first. <laughs> no, they're just bullying me. Exactly. You know what would have helped when I was stuck in that respawn chamber with the uh, cyborg assassin? Um, munitions. A door. Oh. <laughs> wow! I I just totally did some cool ninja style moves that you that you all have to watch. Oh, nice! <laughs> I shoot. I dodge one right in my face, and then I shoot the other one out of the air. <laughs> Best move. Oops. 
We don't need two flechette. We're... Oh, hold on. That was like a much larger image of the weapon then. Which one? The magpuls? Oh, I'm getting yeah, I got confused. When you when you yeah. hold them up just before they go in your inventory, you get quite nice large images. So it would be quite handy if you could mm. get if you could get pictures of all of those and put them into the uh, team drive. I can do. And we have just done a complete loop of the reactor level. That's the shortcut down to that uh, triangular corridor. But we don't want to go that way. So now, hmm. back to level two, so we can fire that laser. <gasps> Unfortunately, um, that's a fast elevator. Yeah, mm. it is. The elevator begins to move. Oh, it's already there. <laughs> now, unfortunately, Shodan has kind of figured out where we've gone and what we've done. So she does this. Oh. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, God. oh, wow. You get flawed pretty quickly. Oops, wrong save. Oh, that's crazy. Oops, wrong save. I think we should definitely have them, like, drop from the ceiling on ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> ribbons? Magical, yeah, you know, like, beautiful. Ribbon dancing assassins. Oh. Cirque du Soleil assassins. Oh, yeah. I like it. That's beautiful. We can have them, like, they can fire shurikens from, like, their feet. <laughs> we can have them breakdance when they're on the floor as well and fire them that way. It'll be great. Oh, damn, I'm going to be the one who has to animate all this, aren't I? I changed my yeah. mind! <laughs> ah, so you just have to get grenade happy. And every shield up. We definitely have the assassins drop from the ceiling because that is cool, but probably in a slightly more um, less serious way. way then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably not Cirque du Soleil style. But <laughs> you never know. Laser control. We're gonna fire the laser. <gasps> ding, ding, ding. Oh, do we want to make the assassins able to go invisible? That's an interesting thing to think about. Oh no, the laser explode. <laughs> you don't seem surprised somehow. <laughs> So many bodies. So, so far, you've only been on three decks. Yes. Hmm. To get this far, that's all you have to do. How far through the actual plot would you say you were? Um, I'd say we're about 20%. Okay. I'm pretty sure you always say 20% whenever you're asked how far you are through <laughs> anything. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Can you pick up those mines at all? Deactivate no. them somehow? No. But you have to actually walk right into them for them to explode. Uh, they don't explode. They are energy drain mines, so if you touch them, they will sap your ah. power supply from your Interesting. Weapon. And sometimes the game can bug out and um, will count each separate frame as a touch, so you can drain your power it's oh no! Al almost instantly, if you're not careful. What happens if you have no power left? Uh, then nothing happens. Oh. 
got new email. That took a while to come through. Who's Pavrovsky? You've got mail. That's strange. I didn't know you could get that email that early. The game is surprising that's, me yet again. That's quite cool though, because it would be really nice to tease the Cortex Reaver earlier in the game. Yeah. If we can, we could have like a bit of video footage or something. Mhm. Mm Especially for people like that haven't played before. <laughs> yeah, out for space. It did look a little bit like the Cortex Reaver was posing for that picture. <laughs> They're in league with Shodan all along. So, there's really no other place to go than level 3. Um, but this email is kind of another call to action. Um, so, you get that email, it says we're on the flight deck. Um, you can then check your past emails to see where the flight deck is, and the flight deck is level 5. Um, the player will wonder how on earth they get to level 5 from here, because all the elevators won't take them to level 5. You can only go up to level 3, but once you get to level 3, you will find out how to get to level 5. You can get, you can try to go to level 6, but the power is being diverted to level R. So the game is, the game at this point railroads you to say you need to go and destroy the laser first before you can progress to level six. Ah. And this is probably like in 1994. This must have been the scariest thing in existence. This level. Because the music, the music is all kinds of scary, and there are invisible mutants everywhere. But they're not really invisible; they're kind of like floating man. Uh, what? Um, yeah, what those invisible things. mutants. I have some. I think I've got some pretty good ideas for those guys. Mm. Because this, I mean, this area is engineering, right? Uh, this level is. Hang on, one second. I'm being shot at. There we go. Blimey, that took forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's your first encounter with one. They will... They do respawn very frequently in this. Okay, um, well, we'll probably adjust that. But um, can you explain to me some of the lore of this level? Um, this is the... Um, maintenance level um it houses it, it's very dark very creepy full of invisible mutants and things you find a lot of the crew have turned into um these invisible mutants there's there are some audio logs some very cool audio logs in this area uh, someone's dying and they can see right through their arm which is a very big hint that these things are turning into that these people we are might have to um, we'll probably end up a a adjusting what they are a bit then because they just look like these little flying manta ray things they do they look like manta rays and it looks kind of it looks I kind mean of I weird. don't have a problem with that but if they're supposed to if they were supposed to used to have been humans we should definitely uh factor that into their design when we update it i'd love to i'd love to see a game attempt one day like a, a fully invisible enemy and you can only locate where it is by the noises it makes and the um well I, actually i suppose amnesia did it um but a mutant that you could only you, you'd have to follow it by the sound so if it possibly sees you it sort of snarls and you can hear the really mm. heavy footsteps coming after you. Um, it, 
Yeah, it kind of worked in Amnesia, but that was only because the level was in water. Um, mm. I don't know if you could do it for this. I got some. I got some ideas. I think for these uh, invisible mutants. Mm. Write them down. Ah! All right, Carly. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Diagnostic logs. That might be important later. And we have the number nine. So we've got the numbers five, three, and nine at this point. Um, smart people um, would have been noting these down um, in back in 1994, like writing these down. If you weren't smart like me, you'd completely forget about the numbers, and then you'd realize something very important later. Just gonna turn the music up because I love the music. I can't turn it up anymore. Um, but here is where we find the most game-breaking weapon ever. Sweet. Break it. And that, ladies and gerbils, is the laser rapier. I'm definitely a gerbil. <laughs> is there more than one of these you can find in the game? Uh, no. I think this is the only one. Um, I don't remember annotating any of any more of these. There might be. Oh, actually, there might be one in. The flight bay, I think. Maybe. Um, we'll find out. The player says it is the only one. Ah, uh, okay. I'm inclined to believe it. Because mm. I don't know any better. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this weapon, this weapon is just stupid powerful. Um, it will kill these, these mutants in one hit. Or two. Cyborg conversion cancelled. Standard station restoration procedures online. So overall, so far, what are your what are you guys' feelings on this level? I like it. It's um, it's probably my favorite one so far. It's pretty iconic. I for think being a bit further in too. I think one with a bit more work done to the respawning patterns and the the enemy types that appear in here, it could it could be made a lot smoother while, without losing the. Uh, the awesome effect. Do those guys, can they float or are they always on the floor? They are always on the floor. That's really strange. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a strange design. They are. I think it would be nice if they could crawl around on the floor, on the floor and the walls and stuff. I will play audio logs from this area because some of them are really cool. There are all these um, maintenance areas as well. If you try and go in them, they're locked because none of the none of the pieces of the station yet have broken, and so no maintenance is required for anything. Um, I can answer Sir Kane's question about the smoother animations. We're the animations will be smooth, but we're going to have like 
the parts move in sections like they've got like pistons that they shut open one bit at a time and stuff to kind of evoke the same feeling as the original game's movement but with like a modern smooth motion I'm going to play all three of these audio logs Turn the volume up a little bit on those. Just back from the security level. It's been remade. If anyone gets it, take repulsor lift to the ledges and move counterclockwise around the level. The elevator to the bridge is missing, but there's a maintenance elevator inside a shaft in the center of the level. There's a force bridge leading to it, but I couldn't find it. Good luck. So, yeah, those three audio logs, you will find audio logs from Abe Giran up there on the security level. Uh, he's talking about a level that is so far in the future um, that it's kind of hard to remember all the things that he says without replaying the audio logs, but uh, yeah. And we have found his head, <laughs> essentially. Um, He's got a great smile on him. Mm hmm. This is the on only head that in the game that isn't destructible. <laughs> for obvious reasons. For, for obvious reasons. I know it sounds silly to say that, but it's true. It'd be cool if the picture was of a severed head and not his, like, class photo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking these little, the little sparky bits of light that are in the damage on the walls. It'd be really nice if we can kind of get that like sparking kind of embers look. Hmm. This um, energy station is a, kind of a trap a little bit. You use it, uh, you will gain energy, but you will take damage from the sparking cables above. Ah. It's a set piece, a set kind of thing. Somebody said he looks very pissed, but to be honest, in the picture, all I can see is some like you're trying to. Uh, Get your prescription from. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he's, <laughs> he's just like, that. not interested. I've ag I agree to this. So we have run out of amoxicillin. You're gonna have to come back <laughs> another time. C he's not no taking sir. any of your shit. <laughs> ah, I like the idea of being able to destroy the head, but it leaves an eye behind. <laughs> you got to collect the eye and use it. Um, so I haven't shown off the uh, sense around unit yet. Um, that's v This is version 1 of the unit. Uh, it updates um, about every second with what's behind you. Version 2 gives you a very smooth image of what is behind you. Really? So it just yep. updates the frame rate? Ah. It does. And version, uh, and version 3 gives oh you... Oh god, the, <laughs> the walls are crawling in that when you turned around. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's interesting. Whoa, what was that sound? That's scary. I think it was Daniel. <laughs> Sound like a mutant for sure. It was me. <laughs> oh God. Say, say, I'll get you next time, gadget. I'll get you next ah! time, gadget. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so good. That's good. The nostalgia. <laughs> I love that show as a kid. Everybody did, didn't they? It was fantastic. It was awesome. <laughs> that's that's my only party trick. I do that whenever I'm given the excuse. <laughs> do, 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 do. 
We should get you to do um, one of. You should play a character in the uh, in the audio logs <laughs> using that voice. <laughs> let's let's replace Diego's voice with that. <laughs> so I'll get you next time, hacker. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Ooh. I'm gonna have to kill you anyway. We'll meet again. I know it. Is that really him? That's not really him. What? Well, that's Diego. not Daniel. Yeah, that's me. That's no, not Daniel. I'm it doesn't cheating. sound anything like him. It's amazing. <laughs> Please tell me we could use Daniel's special voice in the game, Steve. <laughs> I'm not going to stop him. Another audio log. Guess what, Judy? Looks like seating in the viewing room is limited. And guess who gets first dibs? Yep, the exact. I guess the maintenance crews will be getting in in about six months or so. I got together that inventory you asked for. It's all in the storage compartment near the beta maintenance department. There's one navigation and mapping unit, one EMP grenade, six interface demodulators, four holodeck 2100, and three needle darts. <laughs> Gadget, go! We could just say we could save Daniel for Xerxes in uh, System Shock Two. So. Yeah. Well, interface demodulators, they give you six. You only need one. Um, so we'll just take one. <laughs> there isn't really much else to do on this level, at least not now. You can go to um, this. This level does branch out a bit. You can go to um, level six from here. Now that I have destroyed the um, the laser, I have access to level six. But we did get that distress call, so we really should go and see, shouldn't we? Are you going to use anything other than the laser rapier for the rest of the game? No, because it's overpowered <laughs> AF. Okay, so that's definitely, definitely something we need to uh, do some design work on. No. I like this big elevator. I've also noticed that it has a different door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Screenshot it, please. Task list it, please. <laughs> oh, I mean, we can use the bulkhead door on it for now. I just need to know about every door we have. There are so many doors in this game. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So that was. I the... love these gargoyles here. This is Disney's gargoyles. <laughs> so that was the awesome power of the laser nice rapier. Job. But I'm gonna go back to using bullets because I feel like I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm not. Um, hmm. I wonder how we can limit the laser rapier without actually making it feel less cost, powerful. Cost energy. I mean, that would pretty much solve it, wouldn't it? It but does then, cost energy. But more energy then. Yeah. But then we'd also have the risk that like people would just not use it at all if they didn't know where they were next going to be able to pick up energy. Um, I don't know that that's actually that big of a problem, since it's so powerful. Well, that's true. Why lose this any business? These walls are cool. All these stainless steel walls.
<laughs> oh, no arm for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you just run up to him and smack him in the face. Huh. Why aren't you attacking me? Hello? <laughs> He's dancing. <laughs> Are you there? Have, have you not been programmed correctly? He's not feeling very well. Why I've had that happen to me. Him. I've had that happen to me, where the enemies just won't attack me at all. I wish to do that some. I think that's actually that would be a nice Easter egg if occasionally the enemies are just like their uh, programming's gone a bit weird. He just wants to dance. Funny thing. Um, Let him dance. On on level six, uh, there are some plant mutants that are docile. They won't attack the player. Um, Somebody Which... says that cyborg has a nice booty. <laughs> That's too thirsty for cyborg. <laughs> we should take you should take him back to medical and put him in those uh those little dancing podiums. <laughs> oh. oh that one doesn't like you. Cyborg conversion cancelled. Standard station restoration procedures online. Ooh, I heard snarling. I wonder what that could be. I think these red textures are my favorite textures. <gasps> it's so cute! <laughs> Hug it! Oh, it. Oh, the gorilla tiger. Oh! Oh, what did you do? <laughs> I carved him a new one. <laughs> ah, shoot. I think I might have missed that hidden door in the block out. <laughs> I'm telling on you. Mm -hmm. To you. Oh. To who? Oh, Just to him. <laughs> Later, I'm going to tell him. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Daniel's going to be so pissed when he finds out you've missed that door, Daniel. Mm hmm. I need to have stone Wait, words with myself. <laughs> I like these puzzles. The ones that change the ones around them. It's blue, so it's hard to see. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Ah, oh, shoot, I almost had it. This is monstrous. They... Ah! Thought I had it. <gasps> that one... That... Ah! Oh, come on! Do you know what? Logic probe. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. A very important room there, but we don't know the code. And it's blocked by Shonen, so... Uh, so I guess, does anybody have any thoughts about this level so far? Anybody? Hmm. It doesn't feel like the other levels. This one, hmm. this level feels extremely um, <laughs> blocky. Like it's, it doesn't feel like a level that. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like something that would necessarily be on the station. It feels like, it feels like a more of a dungeon crawly thing again. Hmm. Oops. Yeah, if it, it feels, uh, it seems fairly linear from what I've seen so far. Why is there a box full of skulls? Uh, there are many boxes full of skulls. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well then, I guess it's fine. <laughs> Forget I said anything. <laughs> So 
some of these areas I definitely think need to be expanded a bit. Like that room that had Shodan's face on all the monitors. I feel yeah. like... Uh, can you go back and take a look at that? Uh, yeah, can do. I feel like that room in particular would be a good example of a room we should expand. This corridor. Well, you've got all the monitors with Shodan's face on. Yeah, just, yeah, like, um, like that one, uh, CryEngine update somebody, uh, that guy did, um, on System Shock 2. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, kind of like that, where it's more cinematic. Yeah, well, we could have, like, these, this corridor you're going, the walk through this, if we extend the corridor slightly, we could have it so you get halfway through the corridor and all the screens come on. And they're yeah. all, like, they light up the whole corridor with just all these, like, Shodan's face coming on on all the screens. Mm -hmm. It doesn't then, even need to have any significance. It would just be like a moment where the player would go like, "Oh crap!" And then yeah, you get the shot lighting by gets wind. lighting gets dark. The screens yeah. turn on. Yeah. Look at him go! Kill that die. guy! Die! Die! Well, of course you died. You were using the right gun, you idiot. The mind mover. Do you know, just for laughs, I'm going to take it with me. What gun do I need? I don't need the stun gun. Why am I carrying a stun gun? Oh my goodness. I'm going to take the right gun. I think I'm going to have to head off soon and get some food. Oh, oh yeah. we just hit two hours, actually. Ooh, okay. Can't, can't have our team going hungry. And we'll have to find a, to, a place to wrap up. We can do it here. Um, I totally lost track of time. Yeah, I did as well. <laughs> um, so, do you guys have any thoughts, comments on what we've kind of seen so far? It's... Interesting watching you run through because I'm you know exactly what you're doing, but yeah. I'm noticing there's lots of places where the levels loop back on themselves. Yes, it's very it... So if somebody didn't know what they were doing in here, there's definitely gonna be a case of a lot of uh wandering around in circles. Yeah, it's designed it's, uh, it's designed to be an open space, it's like it, it's an actual it's not very video gamey in its space. Like it's mm. like it's like real life. You don't walk down one. C it's not IKEA, you know. You well, don't. No, of course. I do like that about it. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, also, it it goes back easier. That that areas loop around and stuff. Um, I like that. That you don't have to hit a dead end if you keep. Um, I like the way that the focus is on um, on learning the space. Hmm. Like the the levels themselves are not actually that big in terms of. Uh, actual size but they feel big because they're very they loop back on themselves they're very convoluted patterns and so that means that there is not too much to learn but there's you know you can get through the levels very quickly if you know what you're doing but um because they all loop back and everything there's plenty to learn on how it all connects together yeah. so i think that's that's really good and by keeping each area and uh, trying to keep the rooms as distinctive as possible to keep them memorable. I mean, they're already pretty distinctive, but that's something that we need to pay attention to when we're updating the art. Yeah. Um, you also have the auto map, which, it, as you say, it could be easy to get lost, but the auto map really yeah. does help with that. Well, it all works together, I guess. You've got the auto map, the distinctive looking rooms. Yeah. Yep, you do. Um, we can also add to that with the soundscape and everything. Yeah. But you can, you can also make your own notes on the auto map as well, which is really cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, if I... So I'm just going to open the uh, map here. I'll just show you real quick. So just zoom in. Energy station. So now, when you look on the auto map uh, in the game, you can see a little square there, so you know that's where you put the note. Ah, that's cool. You can also 
um, turn on the messages that you type and have them show up in the game in the game's little auto map so if I just come out of here you can just see that I typed energy station in there and yeah. you'll now see it in the world ah what huh yeah I, didn't, I never knew that I never messed with the mini map I was just I, oh my <laughs> <laughs> mind blown That's really cool. We can we can give that some really nice effects in the UI as well. Mhm. Mm okay. Well. Um, yeah. Time did kind of leap ahead of us, and we've all f all forgotten to go eat and stuff. So yeah. we, we're gonna call it there, chaps. It's lunch time. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, and mm. it was nice to get a look through some of these areas and a uh, better idea of how they're all gonna work. I'm especially looking forward to uh, working on which one was it? Was it level three, the dark one with the uh, yeah, the invisible mutants? <laughs> oh, we are going to make that so scary! Mm, <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Scare me. Well, I won't be scared because I'll know what it is. But we want to scare you guys. I'm just going to like sneak a load of hidden stuff in to scare Daniel. <laughs> okay. Right before, right before, <laughs> right before you, I compile the shipping build, you're gonna go right. Let's screw with yep. Daniel. And you're gonna code a whole lot yep. of scary things in there that I have no <laughs> idea about. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Bye. guys, for showing up. We got a lot of viewers today. Thanks, guys, mm -hmm. for being a part of this process, watching us go through the uh, through the game and. Doing all this stuff, so we'll be continuing this. It's next Friday, isn't it? I don't have it marked for the future because it was going to be very dependent on people's schedules. Yeah. So I don't have it marked, but we could possibly do it. So we'll talk, um, and I'll announce if we do. We got some good notes from this one as well, so. Yeah. That's good. Yep. Okay. All right then. So. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, watching us do all this, and uh, yeah, until next time, see you later, stay safe, stay hydrated, <laughs> and <laughs> talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.